Or Okay, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask me in the Playbit Square, any tickers to look up, and we'll look them up as well. So first and foremost, as always, we're going to go ahead and start with our trend journal. It has been a just kind of a choppy week. It hasn't We haven't really done anything. We're in the exact same spot it was a week before. Still above your 21-day moving average, still above your 50-day moving average. The one thing I am noting over the last kind of two days, we're getting more downside reversals over this last two week, two weeks. And then we're also like today, sellers kind of came in pretty heavy at the end of the day. And yesterday it did the same thing. So if we look here, it doesn't look like it too much on a daily chart, but you when you break down into a four hour or into a 15 minute chart, more of an intraday, you do get like this starting up at the top of the day, starting at the high end of the day, trying to push a little higher, we tried to push up here and then we dropped down in the middle of the day. Yesterday, we gapped up, we gapped down, had an upside reversal at the beginning of the day. That was great. And then kind of the end of the day fizzled out and couldn't figure it out. And then we gave back most of, most of those gains today as well. So I am watching for these like little downside reversals that we have been causing and kind of seeing how those are going to react as well. So we have right here, if we just look in this small consolidation, we have one, two, three, four downside reversals. So just something I'm noting. Notice here, it didn't even matter here, didn't matter here. And these were the last times it really started to matter. And so we'll see it, what that really retains to. As for our 30 day moving average, we're still above it. We are, I think 100 days above the 30 day moving average which is, this is the most that we've been above this 30 day moving average since 2020, uh, 2020, we're 101 trading days, which is pretty crazy. If you look at our 2020 rally, and just to give a comparison to how resilient this move has been, we go here, this was 2023, we only went 83, 82 days to the peak, and we were at 101 days to when we really started pulling back below that moving average. We're still well above the 30 day into 101 days where it was then. So then we go back in previous time and you'll see we go back in time a lot to look at how the price is acting now compared to how it was before. This was the previous strongest trend that we had in a long time. And we actually ended up going 150 days above that 30 day moving average. So it was holding really, really well. And that could be something similar. We still got pullbacks. We still got consolidations, consolidations, pullback. They weren't very large. Then we kind of had a blow off top and we haven't really seen this blow off top style like that. And so we could see something like something similar. And then if you go back here, just doing an average over the last five, 10 years or so, this is 95 days. Eighty two. And that's going back five years specifically. So it gets choppier as it gets lower. But you can see that 100 days tends to be a long time. This was a strong rally. This rally that we're having now is a strong rally. So don't get caught trying to short it early. That's all I'm trying to say. Your moving average is still in an uptrend. It's still going up. We're still above a 21 day moving average. Pretty sure we're still even above a 10 day moving average. Yep. Still above the 10, still above the 20, still above the 50. They're all kind of starting to converge together, which could mean that we're gonna we could make a move in one direction. Doesn't necessarily determine which one, but it could determine that we could be making a move in a direction here fairly soon. As you can see on a weekly chart, this is a short week this week. So we do have Friday off. So it's gonna be most likely an inside week. My guess is we, if we overcut this high, I doubt we're going to do it by that much. And then if we get below this low, I doubt we're going to do it by that much. And so I'm really just watching for it to stay within this range. It's fairly large because last week it was, it's a 500 point range, but that kind of like, if we were to have a displacement below there, I would be a little more worrisome, but since it's short week, we have no news. I don't really expect anything too crazy. 
looking at a daily chart, there's no displacement here to really go to the downside. Yes, we are kind of trying to pull back, but you're not seeing displacement. In a four hour, we did bounce, and we're currently still kind of bouncing off of this breaker block here inside of this order, inside of this fair value gap. So I've been watching this specifically. If we break further back below, then I'm also watching this next one to the downside as well, which would be like a breakout retest for a quote retail style right at this midpoint here. And so if we do kind of wick below, I'd be looking to see how we react to this Netflix level down. This is a strong displacement candle here. So it ideally, if we as long as we hold above this candle, then we're gonna we're gonna most likely come to these highs. If we get start getting below this candle and displacing below this candle, then I would be looking more towards these lows here. Right now, we still have we have a higher low that we just put in. So if we kind of create a swing low, then most likely we'll probably come back up to at least this little level of resistance that we hit today. And so I'm watching a lot of that with US 100. That's specifically what I'm watching. Let's get an anchored view up here too, real quick. Yeah, we're right at this anchored view up from this specific low. Right here, boom, 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 boom. Bounced every single time, held it on the four hour. If we get displacement below this anchored view up, you're starting to look for these lows again. And it may not even take these lows. I would just kind of put a zone. I usually try to get in, get out like before because this did make a new high. These lows did make a new high. So there's no sense that it may not even take them. These could be considered strong lows. So that's what I'm looking at for US 100 within the next couple of days. As long as we hold this anchor VWAP from this low, we're going to have least we should bounce and come back up to here or at least here. Next, going into DXY, we had a strong upside reversal the last few days. Nothing strong today, but we did have this fair value gap here with an upside reversal that's very clean. So that's respecting bullish order flow. When you hear Casper talk about that, he'll, he'll say that this is respecting bullish order flow or disrespecting bearish order flow. That's what we're looking for. Are these fair value gaps getting hit into them and then bouncing and closing outside of them? Or are they just getting displacement through that fair value gap? And right now we see here on a daily chart, we are bouncing off of that fair value gap. So, I mean, I know it doesn't look very far, but bare minimum, you're probably going to come up to this high right here. And then above here, you'd be looking more for this 104.95, so 105 essentially for DXY. And that would that's still in this little um, supply zone that I've been watching. And if we kind of get above it, this zone right here, then I'd be looking more for these highs up here, here, and then here. But that's still, we're still kind of working on that. This candle that we're doing on a, on a one month chart still looks pretty decent. Really nice upside reversal right off of off a monthly order block. And so that could even bring us right up here too. Oh, I do want to show, bring my moving averages. We are kind of, let's clean this up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So notice here, like very similar to how we were looking in the other one, except we're right on the 200 day moving average. All your moving averages are together. When you get like that, that starts kind of getting to the point where a move is coming. This is squeezing. When you hear people talk about squeezing, that's what they're talking about. What's up, Freaky? How you doing, man? The main one that we have been watching here is this 200 EMA as well. Boom, right in here. We are getting above your 200 EMA and starting to, again, we got back above it. We got below it, couldn't, couldn't continue lower, created a higher low actually than this low here. And so if we continue next, we will be looking right up here. Pretty easy target. So next would be UJ. This one just looks like it's about to break out on a monthly chart.
Monthly chart, honestly, it looks like it wants this level. 160. Right here. Because this, this looks like a very like basic volatility contraction pattern, just like a ascending triangle style. Looks like we still have some of our anchor view ops that we were looking at. So this is the anchor view op from July, the low from July. Notice how it took this fair value gap on the monthly, bounced heavy off of it and continued higher. And so then we bounced right off of that same fair value gap right there, that same anchored view up here. So that honestly, I mean, it's super close. If you look at it on a monthly, it looks like it's nothing, but these highs are pretty much going to get hit. Looking at a, looking at a weekly, again, it's very, very close, very, very close. And then daily, it looks like, yeah, we had an upside reversal the last two days. We're just bull flagging on the daily. Bounce off here. I mean, there's, we're most likely going to, fuck, this is almost in right here. How, how are we going to get in this, though? No displacement here yet, actually. Cause I do want to get in this for this specific trade to get over the, to these highs. I think we're going to hit them. We're going to have to wait. I want to see a fair value gap get created. So you notice every single fair value gap is taken. If you were literally to get in right here, Stop loss below this fair value gap. It's like a, almost a three to one. If you put a stop right below this swing low, because this is considered a swing low now, because we have a low, a higher low, lower low, higher low. That's a swing low. So if we put a stop loss a little bit below that swing low, which is right at this anchored view up from March, then that tightens it up a little bit to a three five. So this is something I'm gonna look for. I gotta wait till futures open at three o'clock. Um, three o'clock my time, six o'clock Eastern time. But this is something that I might play. I will probably call, I will call this out if I do. But look for UJ to hit 152. And then above there, it's kind of just gonna fly. It's in price discovery mode for the last 20 years. Which goes with my Euro idea as well because I'm bearish on the Euro right now. Bullish dollar bearish Euro. Notice here we came off this 200 EMA on the weekly chart, which is happening to a lot of stocks right now, honestly, too. So that's just something also to note. Monthly close is almost over, so we're gonna go ahead and look at this as well, because we only have three days left. So we came into this bearish order block right here. We have a candle engulfed the whole candle. So that would be a or bearish order block. Came right into that rejecting there here. And now we're coming down on a weekly, which was right at this 200 EMA. And it looks like we're continuing. We have bearish came in yes last week, upside downside reversal, which means this candle here is most likely going to get held, this weekly candle. It's probably going to get stay below that candle if we are going to continue to be bearish. And that would look for us to come down to this specific low here, this next swing low. Looking on a daily, that's very similar. It's still kind of respecting that bearish order flow. And it's starting to have a little bit of a, like a quote, head and shoulders style. Oops, I don't want those. Let's hide all. Shoulder, head, if we do kind of pivot here, create a shoulder, now we have an, at least a pivot point. I don't care if you want to call it neckline, pivot point, whatever. Well, we have a level. Well, it was respected, respected, broke down, respected, came up, respected, respected. 
below here, you're looking for here. Notice it went down below here, came to here. Went from here, came straight up to here. So every time, that's what it does. Right here, it came straight to here. So it got a little, saved a little bit, but it took a low, took that low out here with displacement, full close below. So now, yeah, I'm looking for come back into this. And notice here, this is a bearish fair value up here. Internal liquidity seeks external liquidity. Came up right into this order block. Boom, rejected. Now again, let's look where the fuck can we get in. Notice we came right into, there's a, another fair value gap here. Respected that. This is going to be another one that's going to be, unless it bounces, it comes up to here. Or even this. So it looks like it's just going to continue. We are right at this though. Market structure shows here. So we're going to see if we just respect that if we start creating bullish order flow, we could bounce here and bounce up to one of these higher fair value jobs. That's what I would be looking for on the euro. I'm bearish on the euro right now. I think we are going to continue to these lows on a higher time frame. And then when you get into our the volume, and I talk about volume a lot, you notice on a daily, what do you see more than anything? Ignore any of the lines or any, any of the candles, anything. What do you see more at the volume? You see more cells. Cells, 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 cells. You see more cell spikes. That's a sign of institutional distribution. When you see cell spikes, you're looking to continue to, lo to, to lower. When you see buy spikes, notice here, buy spikes, buy spikes, buy spikes, buy spikes. It continued higher. Buy spikes, higher. Here. Look at all these buy spikes. Buy spikes, buy spikes. All of these, it's continuing higher. Vice versa with sell spikes. It continues lower. So that would be kind of one another another confluence that I got for continuing lower. Um, I don't really, GJ is kind of in another shit spot because it's right above its 200 EMA, so it could bounce, but it's still respecting this bearish order flow and this anchored view up from this low here. So it's most likely going to come back to this low here because actually this is a really good manipulation here. Came up, now it's respecting bearish order flow. Now you got displacement on this candle. No displacement to the upside. Most likely going to come to the other end of the range. So you're probably going to look for GU to come to this bottom end. If it doesn't, it's going to bounce. If, if it gets below this 200 EMA, this is the only thing holding it from there. But if you look on a weekly, it looks pretty like it's going there. Um, next, I want to go to IWM. We've been watching this specific breakout. And I've been noting here that we have not gotten displacement above this December high from December 2023. We have not gotten any sort of displacement. Look at this. We get above it. We come down. We, get a, we gap up. We close at the lows. We gap up. We close at the lows. Gap up. Get below it. Close below it. Can't hold below it. Get above it. Close at the lows. Again, the last three days, closing at the lows. This level's getting stressful for it. So eventually it's either going to get some displacement up and get to this 212 level. And if it gets below this 199, then it's most likely going to come to this 200 EMA here at 191. Or this next, at least this next level at 196. I want to see, and you got to see some sort of displacement. You need to see more buy spikes. You're starting to here, boom, these starting to see more buy spikes that are heavier than this whole set. It's so like this one right here, March 15th. That 
That was the highest buy volume and the highest volume in itself for over a month. That's positive thing. Again, right here, again, very high volume. The highest volume it had been in over a month besides that other day. And so we're watching and we want to see high volume. We did see today heavier volume than yesterday. Luckily, and it was a downside reversal. So I would call that a distribution day. We may not get we may not get it from an IBD per, uh, perspective because it didn't close at a specific down point. But that's that's a sign of distribution to me. It's going to it's trying to get higher and it's closing at the lows. Um, next, I want to go into Halle Burton. That is close at the lows. I actually didn't look at this at the end of the day. Close out the lows today, almost at its 10-day moving average. So I'm going to see how it reacts at this 10-day, and then we'll determine that. This right As of right now, this low is my stop loss. If it gets back below this midpoint at 37.6, it's going to fail it. The contracts probably aren't up that much. They haven't been moving very well because it's just kind of sided. It's not a heavy move to the upside, and we've only gotten like a dollar appreciation. Now it's only like 30 cents, so they might even be back to break even. But it was worth a shot to see if this was going to come and see if oil is going to continue higher. I don't like this candle. If this weekly candle closes like this, I might just close it at whatever it's at. I don't like how we have two kind of high wicked candles in a row here. Let's look at oil. Yeah, this level that I've been watching on oil... This huge kind of similar, same thing as, uh, same thing as, what's it called? Uh, same thing as DXY. I mean, it's just right here. You're at this supply zone. And if it gets rejected, it's going to come at least back to this 200 EMA. I'll try to send and forget style with that big RR. Yeah, but I mean, that's just, that's what you want. That's not the RR what we originated with either. That's the RR for what it would be now because I moved my stop up. We got in here and the original R was down here at 36. Now I moved my stop up because it, so it was a 4R originally. And now I moved my stop up because it's saying, okay, I'm not going to let this green trade go red and go and break down. Now that I've seen this specific breakout, it's on good volume. I'm not going to watch a break down here. So it turned the RR into a higher, a little bit uh, deceiving. But that's just because now this is a little little heavier because a little heavier of a risk reward because you got, I moved my stops up already. So with oil, I want to see it get above. See, it's, I don't, it's kind of in a, it's kind of in a bull flag, but it created a lower high here. I hate intraday oil. I only like weekly. It needs to get above this high, this high here. This 83.3. This whole supply zone. I need to see it above with displacement, or this will be the exact same thing as uh, DXY, where it's just going to kind of come back down and consolidate more. Right here. Let's get rid of some of these. Yeah, so this level right here, this candle, these two, that's what I'm looking at. So if you just compare them, I don't have the best screen for this, but. Rejected, rejected. This one came up, but. Similar here, rejected, 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 rejected. Just that same style. So that's what I'm watching on oil. If it comes back, gets rejected here, I mean, shit, we could come all the way back here. I don't know yet, though. I'm not going that far into it because we're still above a 10-week moving average. I'm going back in it. A few stocks that I'm watching, I'm always watching 
these two stock these three stocks because they are a huge market sentiment in my opinion it's smci nvidia amd you always should be watching these watching for to see how they react when the, they go down the market tends to go with it and so this is looking the the monthly chart you see two heavy top wicks which really just tells me that it's either going to consult that it could consolidate it needs a base it needs to build something We've seen heavy top wicks here, seen heavy top wicks here. So it doesn't mean it's over because look at, we had beautiful price action. It's still very nice, very clean, but it's been crazy. So you go to the weekly chart. That was a monthly. Go to a weekly chart here. We got downside reversal this week. Kind of so far, it's not finished yet. Bounces up from last week. So that right at a 10 week moving average. What we're looking at is this 10 week to hold. It's held since January. It's really held since December. But as long as this 10 week holds, see how you could have, that's really good to, to study right there. But as long as that 10 week holds, then you could be looking for, it's at least gonna bounce. But I don't trade this, contracts are terrible, but it's good to watch. You have this specific high now, struggling to get back over. So now I would look for it to break back below kind of these lows here in this low. And if it does, then we're going to start coming back down probably into this level here, the 620s. Let me get a 50 day, where's the 200 day? 200 is way down here. Holy fuck. A hundred fifty days way down there. That's weird. So the 150 days wait, 150 days way lower than the 200 day. But it could come to the 200 day even. Nvidia, another one where it's just, this looks better than SMCI in my opinion, but it's stuck in this low, in this range, in this specific bar. I call that a mother bar. Is this a 10 day? Yep, 10 day. So it's still above the 10 day, just like everything, just like QQQ. So if it gets below and starts breaking back through these like 840s, then it can come back to the 750 ish. AMD is fucking simple. AMD is another, I think I call these, these are market sentiment trades they're pretty much what these do the most of the market is going to follow and that's what i really look for amd you got this consolidation here you break out now we're back inside this consolidation below your 50 day 50 day yep below your 50 day below your 10 day as long as it stays below this 80 185 we're looking for 162 especially if it stays below this 50 day here and starts rejecting it and you see this 50 day start curling down and go like that and then price starts rejecting it then it's going to go right there it's going to do that's shitty drawing but as long as the price would stay below the 50 day then it's going to go down to there especially so definitely something to keep an eye on but if it gets back above here then you could look for higher prices. I'd really need to see it above the anchored VWAP from this specific high, which is right at 190. So in a few stocks, I do think that for the rest of the year, I know I'm saying that it's pretty bleak as of right now, or it's kind of extended, but a few stocks that I'm looking at for the rest of the year that I think because I am bullish for like after April, March or April, May, November or April, May, 
June, July, kind of going into the summer and uh, fall. Fall, winter specifically, is going to be good times. Summer could be a little choppier, but fall, winter, I think that we're definitely going to see upward price movements. There's, and I seen a statistic earlier, um, I posted this in our Discord, and it was when you get Q1 of, Q1 of a as S&P 500 up more than 8% in Q1, there's a 94% chance that it's going to go, it's going to close higher than it did in Q1 for the year. And most of the time, I don't remember the exact percentage, I'll post that, uh, what, I'll post that statistic, but most of the time it went up another 8%. And so that would bring SPY, if we look at S&P 500, Another 8% would be 560 roughly. And that's kind of where I've been looking. So maybe there's like an end of the year butterfly we might be able to get to. See how cheap it could be for like a 560, 565. There's a few that I really like. I think cybersecurity is going to stay strong. PANW is right at its 200 EMA, right at its anchored view up here from the August gap up, or these August highs. I don't know why it's there, but it should be here. So at this anchored view up here, if we can form a base here, let some of these moving averages come down to it, especially like this 50 day, let this 50 day really come down to it and then kind of f fall out and then start moving back up. I think these could be real continue to be good trades for the for the remainder of the year. They don't just look broken like they're going to going to fall off. Like look at here. Came back, boom, bounced, based and went up. So if we can do something like that cuz we're coming right to the top of this base here. Came down, bounced, based, continued. Down, bounced, based, continued. So that's really what I'm looking at for some for like PANW. I really like NET right now. If we do continue up, we are holding and forming this base. This is what I would be looking at. Forming this base right on after this gap up. We had a huge gap up with earnings, gave actually all of it back, filled the gap and bounced right away held right at the 50 day moving average, which is what we want to see. And now I want to see it kind of base out a little bit more too. So if it does hold here, I would want to get in somewhere down a little lower in this range. Let's see where this anchored view up is. Yeah, right here. See the anchored view up from the low is right here. And I would want to see that hold. So about $96. So if we can get in there and then at minimum, you're looking to come to the high end of the range or at least this breakout level, this three to one. And then really maximum, you'd be looking to come up to the highs, 20% higher. So that's what I'm looking with uh, NET if the market wants to continue higher and kind of individual stocks can still run. And that's what we're seeing a lot of times too. Oh, Upstart had a terrible day I do like zoom too this was the other one I wanted to show zoom is starting to really show like this high this this was key this really heavy volume candle and we're still holding into it and into this breaker that it broke out of so we could dig into it a little deeper form an upside reversal on a weekly chart and I, this could be this could be a nice setup here. Nothing yet. A lot of things, in my opinion, aren't actionable. It's just kind of waiting and watching. Um, one another thing that I am in is this Lee Auto, and I am in a strangle. It is below our thirty-two strike. Um, on Friday, because like we have a thirty-two and forty-seven for our strikes, sell the thirty-two put, sell the forty-seven call. We're in the water a little bit now, but it is what it is. We're gonna roll these strikes to this next uh date there for april come probably thursday probably thursday wednesday thursday 
roll them over to the next expiration into May or even June. Probably roll it down to 30, 25, somewhere around there, maybe at 25. And collect a little bit of credit. You can leave, maybe roll the short calls down to 45. And that would just bring us a break evens a lot wider. Continue the trade on for longer and let it go, let it ride. And that's kind of the plan for Lee Auto. Neo, also similar, similar style. We're in the water on it. We have like a six, we had a six dollar put that we're selling, collected about a dollar on it. So our break even is about five dollars. What do we do? We're in the water. Well, there's two options. One, take the take the assignment at six dollars, start selling, start selling calls against it. That's perfectly fine. I might do it. We'll see. Two, which is what I'm gonna do initially at least, is roll it. And that's an easy, easy style, just like the other one. Roll it for a credit, leave it at the six dollar strike, maybe even go down to five. Roll it out to June, July, something like that, and then let it extend the duration of the trade. As it bounces, hope in thinking that it'll continue lower, giving us more credit, giving us more credit, bringing our break even down. And then eventually, if we want to get, we will, we can get assigned. Once we get assigned, we'll eventually we'll get assigned down here around four dollars instead of at six dollars or five dollars, and then we can start selling calls. So five dollar calls, six dollar calls. If they go in the money, we make money. So that's the plan with Neo as well. I've had a few people ask me about that. Um, last but not least, TLT. I am watching this very very heavy. This is what I'm looking at right now. The one thing I am watching is this 50 day moving average. I want to see it get above. So I might give up a little bit of this price a price point to see it get above it. Because in the past when I've waited and gotten in before it on a declining 50 day like that, I've kind of gotten fucked. So I really want to see. I love today's volume upside reversal the last two days. Today's volume is wonderful. We got a low here a respected low created a higher low here at this anchored view up from this low from this specific low from october and that's where we would look to swing this up to 90 first target would be 200 ema obviously in my opinion that's obvious for me i just i want to see how they react and so that would be a little a little tight for the first target. I'd probably bring my risk up a little bit from instead of this low now that we've held it. And if we get above this 50 day, I'd probably just bring it up to this um, moving average here. So that would bring about a 2R for the um, 200 day. This 97, that was this the high here. This is the range I'm looking at. That would be a 3R and then next point would be that next high at 98 and that's a four hour. so this one i'd get probably january contracts 2025 tlt contracts are one are a little weird and they don't run too fast so i definitely want would be getting a little longer term for this one so any tickers or anything anybody wants to look at okay do you think we can continue this us us 100 long rally yes um, I mentioned that earlier. I did talk about that freaky how I think that if we do have a pullback that is perfectly fine But I do think honestly, I've been talking about this a lot. I think till 2026 That's in I can give I'm not gonna do it today um, But I do have a lot of statistical reasons. I think until 2026 is really gonna be where we're gonna go up and at least have something similar to let's go to spy something similar to this this or this so a steady uptrend with its peaks and valleys you know ups and downs sideways movements ups and downs but i think we're going to have an uptrend until about 2026 we see we see a four year cycle with the presidential cycle where the midterm year tends to be the weakest year. And that was 2022. That was 2018. That was um, before that would be 2014, which I don't know exactly. 
which that was more of a, yeah, that's a down year. And so just kind of something I've been thinking of. I'll go more in depth of it over the next few few months. I'm not going to really go into it really at all right now. It's just I've been studying the background of the four-year trend and seeing what we can continue with. But I think for this year, I think we're safe. We're going to con continue higher. I think overall SPY, let's get to the beginning of the year here. Where is January 1st? December 29th is fine. Yeah, roughly about a 15 to 16% year. 20% would be fine. And that's just a rough estimate. 560. Five fifty, five sixty would be ideal. Right around this zone would be where I'd be looking for the end of the year. And unless something changes, I'll let you know if anything changes. But as of right now, I'm just kind of looking to continue higher on pullbacks. Heavier, looking for some pullbacks on pullbacks, looking to buy. Any questions or trades or anything you want to look at? All right, if not, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.